we move on to the next topic which is uh, network protection right uh, telecom services actually guarantee 99.9993 sigma uh, level uh, protection uh, in the sense that uh, the connection the connectivity is guaranteed for 99.999 percentage of the time which means that the downtime expected is uh, expected to be really really low in an optical fiber link now uh, this is not related to the call drop of a wireless network that's because of a, se a separate issue uh, we are talking about only the optical link and in the optical link the uh, requirement uh, reliability requirement is this so uh, what are the sources of uh, failure uh, why should the network fail network could fail because my transmitter receiver my hardware fails or uh, my software fails there are a lot of uh, software uh, management that is happening in the network uh, when you are trying to establish the circuit or when you are in a packet switching network if you are trying to establish the route for a packet if the software fails that's a network failure uh, the most important uh, reason for network failure uh, is uh, in a country like india especially is fiber cut due to construction so you know that this fiber is uh, dug in the uh, under the roads and uh, all the services um, you know whether it's water pipeline or electricity pipeline all that is also under the uh, all those services are also using the same uh, you know space so unless there is a very clear planning and uh, of these resources uh, what may end up happening is that when you're doing a construction, when you're digging the road for laying your uh, water pipelines, you may inadvertently uh, cut the fiber. So there are these uh, city standards which uh, the corporations uh, mention saying that um, water pipeline should be at a specific depth, electrical line should be at another depth and fiber line is at a very different depth so that you do not inadvertently cut the fibers but instead even then you can you could have fiber cuts the most dangerous fiber cut of course happens whenever the uh, there is a cut happening in a submarine link in that case uh, you know the entire connectivity to the country probably gets uh, disturbed we have had such instances couple of instances in the past where the submarine cables in different uh, locations got cut uh, the, the, the other reason for failure, of course, is the uh, human error while operating. Uh, what is the solution? The solution is very simple. Always provide a redundant path. So let's say you are connecting between point A and point B. Uh, do not rely on one path between point A and point B. Uh, for In fact, the, to achieve these kind of standards, you would require a redundant path for every working path, which means Every time the working path fails, there is always a redundant path which gets automatically turned in when your uh, working path fails. Uh, it of course complicates the network, it increases the cost. Um, so the compromise is for getting shared protection in the sense that the redundant path is shared between different uh, nodes. So let's take uh, for example the ring architecture. We said that the ring architecture is probably the uh, most versatile in uh, providing uh, network protection. Um, the ring architecture actually uh, provides two separate paths. So this is the double ring architecture we are talking about. It separates uh, two paths between any pair of nodes. So uh, you have these add drop multiplexers which are your nodes. In these add drop multiplexers you will obviously have a receiver, right? Uh, sorry, transmitter. So all these A or add drop multiplexers will have something like uh, this. You have a receiver which receives your signal. Then there is uh, electronics. So here comes your layer true, layer two, which decides to add uh, drop the channels and which also decides to add the channels right so i could show it here or i could actually show it here and then there is a transmitter which retransmits your information okay so this part is uh, 
and, and uh, you could also have a receiver which handles data in the other direction. It could also drop or add and then you have the transmitter. Okay. So, you have add and drop. So, this is what is internally in each of these uh, ADM uh, blocks. Okay. Uh, now, what happens in this uh, uh, what is called as UPSR? UPSR is unidirectional path switched uh, rings. Uh, this is one of the very common implementations of uh, ring architecture. Um, this as we said earlier this you could find this architecture in um, metro or in uh, long haul or even in access uh, networks. Uh, it is not necessary that this architecture connects only 4 nodes, you could have multiple nodes, uh, you could have n nodes connected in this architecture. As an example, I am showing you 4 nodes. Uh, so, the working traffic actually from node A to node B is carried in this clockwise direction. So, let me use another color here. The working traffic is carried in the clockwise direction, so node A to B which means if you want to connect from uh, uh, B to A that is also carried in the uh, clockwise direction like this. Okay. Uh, and what you also do in this UPSR is that uh, simultaneously while this working traffic is carried through this what is called as a working fiber. There is this protection fiber which is a second fiber, remember this is a dual fiber configuration. So, there is a protection fiber, that protection fiber is also carrying the data which means let us say I am trying to make a connection between node A and node B. The working uh, fiber will connect through this way, the protection fiber provides a connection this way, right. The protection fiber carries it in the counterclockwise direction, protection fiber connects it this way which means the node B is actually getting the same information through two paths, one from the working fiber and one from the protection fiber, this is always on. Okay. And uh, the node can then decide which one to use. Okay. Uh, so, obviously in this case from A to B in the working fiber is the shortest path, uh, so the data quality in that connection is going to be better, the SNR is going to be better. So, the node B just decides to uh, use that uh, data that it received from the working connection. Okay. Uh, but at any time whenever there is a link failure, you also have the data coming through the protection fiber. So, uh, it is like a automatic healing system. Right? It gets naturally healed, you do not have to do anything, there is no intelligence required. Uh, when there is a fiber cut obviously from A to uh, B, uh, the connection from A to B in the clockwise direction is cut, but since there is a connection already established in the counterclockwise direction, that connections take over and B will always get that data. So, uh, the traffic in that sense is getting rerouted, so it is as if the traffic got rerouted in the other direction. Okay. So, this is how a uh, two fiber UPSR works. A modification to this design which is again uh, very commonly implemented these days is called as uh, BSLR, BL, BLSR 4 which is bi-directional line switched uh, ring BLSR 4. 4 means that there are 4 fibers in connected between the nodes. So, in this case your add drop multiplexer is slightly little more complicated. So, you have uh, the electronics in the middle, you have 4 sets of uh, transceiver pairs. So, you have a receiver, you have a transmitter, you have correspondingly a transmitter uh, receiver, this collects data, this passes data, this collects uh, data in this direction passes data. But you also have another receiver uh, transmitter pair, this is like for the redundancy, right. So, you have Tx Rx, this is just for the redundancy, you have, I uh, will show it as dotted lines because this is the protection uh, trans uh, transceivers. So, you have this, oops. So, you have these uh, protection transceivers. Um, 
every so the working connection is uh, two directional ok. Uh, each node will have now two sets of uh, transceivers. So, one set of transceivers of course, uh, one set of transceiver would mean two transceivers one for the uh, clockwise path and the other for the counterclockwise uh, path and under normal op operation um, both these paths are not functional only the shortest path is function. So, let us say you want to uh, transmit from uh, link uh, node A to uh, node B. So, the obviously the shortest path between node A and uh, node B is uh, the working connection shown here. So, this is the shortest path. So, you have this and similarly from node B to node A is through this and so the top one fiber takes care of the clockwise traffic the other fiber takes care of the counterclockwise traffic. If you want to transmit from A to C, uh, obviously whether it goes from A to B to C or A to D to C is the same. So, I mean any one of that is chosen, uh, but unlike the unidirectional uh, ring that we saw earlier, if you want to transmit from uh, A to D for instance, you do not have to go from A to B to C to D, it will always uh, choose. Uh, there are so unlike the unidirectional case where both this uh, both this uh, paths were active and the one with the best data quality is chosen here a decision is already made that look a to d is uh, better to go in the counterclockwise direction so uh, this set of so you have a transmitter here so this trans set of transmitter is activated and you receive here and again from d to a you don't go through c you activate the transmitter here and the data is transmitted through uh, this fiber to reach A. This is your regular working uh, connection. Uh, whenever there is a fault, okay, when there is a fault, uh, there are two types of fault protection systems here. One is called as the span switching, the other one is called as the ring switching. So, in span switching what happens is let us say uh, a specific, so for example from again we are talking about connectivity between A and B. So, you have a transmitter here, you have a receiver here, you have a transmitter here and you have a receiver here. Now, let us say um, this receiver fails, right. In B in the node uh, a specific transceiver pair is failing and let us say you are trying to communicate to uh, C. Okay, let us take an example where you are trying to communicate to C. To go to C, you have to go through B or you have to go through D. So, let us say it is trying to go through B, but for some reason this transceiver um, failed. Okay. Now, when this transceiver failed, um, the traffic gets switched from this working switch, uh, sorry, working connection and the protection connection, the protection fiber now gets activated. Okay. So, it means that this transme transceiver A or rather the uh, node A now activates uh, this transmitter and this receiver, the second set of transmitter and receiver and sorry, the node B activates uh, because the damage has happened in node B. So, what node B does is it activates the uh, second set of uh, receiver uh, transmitter uh, pair. So, this is the receiver and uh, this is the transmitter and receiver. So, it activates the second set of transmitter receiver pair. This is faulty. So, it activates the second set and then it routes it through the protection fiber. Okay. Now, this happens uh, either when the uh, there is a transceiver fault or this happens when the working connection gets broken. That is called span switching. Uh, with the result that only this in this span the uh, protection fiber is activated. In the rest of the link the working fiber continues to uh, work. Um, only one span is impacted and so the repair has to be done only for one span. Now, in ring switching suppose uh, happens when uh, let us say both the working fiber and the protection fiber got damaged. There is a cable cut and uh, there is a major cable fault and both the working and the protection fiber got damaged. Then the only way to do that is actually activate uh, the entire uh, traffic to through the protection fiber. So, you basically avoid this and go back to your prote protection fiber and use your protection fibers to uh, uh, 
set up the entire network. So, um, the good thing about the bidirectional line switching is that um, depending on uh, what fault it is, you could uh, activate the entire protection fiber or you need to activate only one span of the protection fiber or one node, uh, one transceiver node. Uh, what are the standards? Now, we are doing all this. Uh, how much time can you do for, uh, you know, uh, there has to be a decision made uh, that the line has to be switched, it has to go on to the next node and so on. So, what is the allowed standard? The SONET standard says that the service must be restored within 60 milliseconds of failure and the service time should include the time taken to detect the failure which is typically 10 millisecond. Time taken by the uh, signal uh, needed for the signal to uh, other node, I mean including the propagation delays. If there is a larger path that needs to be followed, uh, the, it has to be uh, accounted for. Uh, it also includes the actual switching time and it also uh, has to account for the time taken to reacquire the frame and do a frame synchronization after the switchover has occurred. All that should happen within 60 milliseconds after the failure. So, whenever there is a fiber cut within 60 milliseconds, all this process has happened. Otherwise, we cannot maintain that 99.999 percentage of uh, reliability. So, that completes the uh, protection uh, part of the network.